Bearings are a way of describing a direction. One way we can describe a direction is with a compass, north, east, south or west. Well, bearings are very similar, but instead of north, east, south and west, they're measured in degrees. And this means we can describe a direction with much more accuracy. Understanding the link between the two can be really helpful. So when we talk about bearings, we talk about a bearing of one place from somewhere else. And that's the exact same thing we do for compass points. So for example, in this question, what's the direction of the science laboratory from the school? We have to imagine we're at the school, that's where we're coming from, and we need to identify what direction we would travel to get to the science laboratory, and it's northeast in this case. Bearings are just a way of putting a number on that direction so we can be more precise. But there are some rules that we need to follow to make sure that when we're describing bearings, we're describing the exact same thing as everyone else. And the three key rules are, firstly, the angle is always measured from north, and you'll typically see them drawn like this with the north line drawn in. Second rule is that the angle is measured clockwise from that north line. And then the final rule is that the bearing always has to have at least three figures, hundreds, tens and units. And the hundreds and tens could be zero. So for example, we would write a bearing of eight degrees like this, zero, zero, eight. So I'm going to go through a few examples to explain these points a bit more and to show you where people sometimes make mistakes. You can see the questions I'm going to be answering here and I'll put the timings in the description below as well. Before I do any of that, if you're looking to improve at maths, whatever level you're at now, and if you're looking for something that's going to help you identify what you need to do to get better or just to get you to a particular grade, then don't forget to head over to my website mathskitchen.com. We've got everything you need automatically marked, practice questions, grade indicators, personalized work tailored to your abilities, everything basically to get you on track and succeeding with your maths. mathskitchen.com. And if you want to practice the precise questions or types of questions on bearings that I'm going through in this video, then I'll leave a link to that as well. I've got a little set of questions that you can practice there too. Okay, back to bearings. In the diagram below, the direction of north is indicated with the letter N. The points A and B are also shown and a protractor has been placed on the diagram. Write down the bearing of B from A. Well, this question is asking us to find the bearing of B from A. So we've got to imagine we're traveling from point A, you know, from point A to point B, and we need to know what direction that is. And the rules tell us we must always measure the angle from north. So I find it helpful to imagine I'm standing at point A and I'm facing north and then I'm going to turn clockwise until I'm facing point B. And the angle I've had to turn through is the bearing from A to B. When you work on the Mass Kitchen site, we're going to show you the protractor, but this is what the question would look like if you're doing it on paper. And I just want to talk you through using the protractor because it's somewhere people often make mistakes. Now, the first thing I tend to do actually is just estimate the size of the angle. This one's clearly smaller than a right angle. It's less than 90 degrees. It's an acute angle. I would estimate it's around 45 degrees, something like that. The next thing then using the actual protractor is I'm going to place it really accurately on the page. I'm going to take real care to make sure zero is lined up precisely with north and that the center of the protractor is precisely on point A. And you may well need to keep readjusting that until you get both of those spot on. Now, there are four different numbers there around the line and that can be confusing. Um, it looks like it's either between 50 and 60 or between 120 and 130. Well, we know it's an acute angle from when we estimated the size earlier. So it's definitely less than 90 degrees. So it can't be the, you know, between 120, 130. It's got to be between 50 and 60. Now, when we measure these, we're measuring clockwise from north with the zero lined up with north. So we're counting up from zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And this angle is just slightly bigger than 50. It's just one degree bigger. It's one click on from 50. So it's 51 degrees. So we would say the bearing is 51 degrees. But don't forget we've got that rule where it has to be three digits. So in this case, 
In this case, we replace a zero in the hundreds column, so it looked like this, zero, five, one. In the diagram below, the direction of north is indicated with letter N. The points A and B are also shown and a protractor has been placed on the diagram. Write down a bearing of B from A. This question is asking us to write down a bearing of B from A. So imagine you're coming from point A, as it says, and you want to head towards point B. I want to estimate the size of that angle to start with. I can see it's bigger than a right angle, but it's smaller than 180 degrees. So it's somewhere between 90 and 180. I would say it's a bit more than halfway between those two. So around 140 degrees, I would guess, something like that. So now we're going to place our protractor so that the center is precisely on point A. Zero is precisely pointing to north. On the site, that's already been done for us, but this is what it looked like on paper. You might need to do a bit of readjusting here to make sure both of those are correct. And don't forget the rules that we need to adhere to when we're describing bearings, which are that we must measure clockwise from north. And if we do that, you can see we've got the two sets of numbers on the protractor. The outer ones show the line is pointing between 40 and 50. Well, we know the angle is bigger than 90, so it can't be that one. Um, it's got to be the one that is between 130 and 140. Okay, so as I say, we're measuring clockwise from north. So we're going to be starting at zero and counting up, okay, which helps make sense of that as well, doesn't it? So we're up to 110, 120, 130. And in fact, we don't quite make it to 140. It's, it stops kind of three clicks below 140. So that's at 137. So the bearing of B from A is 137. In the diagram, the direction of north is indicated with the letter N. The points A and B are also shown and a protractor has been placed on the diagram. What is the bearing of B from A? In this question, we need to measure the bearing of B from A. So we're coming from A, heading to B. So if I was at A facing north, what angle would I need to turn through clockwise to be facing B? And whatever that is, that's a bearing that we want. Now my protractor is only half a circle, it only goes up to 180 degrees, and this angle is bigger than that. So what I do is I flip it over like this, and I'm making sure it's lined up with north, the center is precisely on point A. I know that this angle here is 180 degrees, it's half that circle. So all I do is continue counting round from there, and I'm gonna to need to add on that additional angle. The additional angle I can see is less than 90 degrees, and looking at the protractor, it must be between 70 and 80. In fact, it's one further on from 70, 71 degrees. So I add that 71 degrees onto the 180, which gives me 251 degrees. That tells me that the bearing of B from A is 251 degrees. In the diagram, the direction of north is indicated with the letter N. The points A and B are also shown and a protractor has been placed on the diagram. What is the bearing of B from A? Now we need to know the bearing, which is the angle clockwise starting from north. That means that point B is almost a full turn. So a full turn would be 360 degrees. This is just a little bit less than that. Now, because most protractors are only half circles, these kinds of questions can be a little awkward, but all I tend to do is just measure how much less than 360 degrees it is. In other words, I measure this acute angle, and then I subtract that from 360. So to measure the acute angle, I'm just gonna measure anti-clockwise from north. I can see it's less than 90 degrees, so it must be the one in between 30 and 40 on the protractor. In fact, it's three on from 30, it's 33 degrees. That's the angle anti-clockwise from north. The bearing, the one that's clockwise from north, is 30, 33 degrees less than that. In other words, 33 degrees less than 360. So it's 327 degrees. In the diagram below, the direction of north is indicated with the letter N, and the points P and Q are also shown. We're asked to write down the bearing of Q from P. So we're actually given the angles in this question. There's no measuring to do. We just got to work out which is the correct one. Is it the 55 or the 235? People sometimes get in a little muddle, but it's pretty straightforward. I just focus on the from part. In this example, we're coming from P. 
So I want to know what the angle is if I'm coming from P and I want to head to point Q. All right, so if I was at point P facing north, what angle would I need to turn through clockwise to be pointing towards Q? You can see it's that one there. And in this case, we're given the angle, it's 235 degrees. It's nothing to work out, that's your answer. So if you're confused, just focus on that from part, the where you're coming from. In the diagram, the direction of north is indicated with the letter N in two places. The points A and B are also shown, and we're asked to work out the bearing of B from A. And we're given the 73 degree angle, only that's not actually the angle that we want. The question talks about the bearing of B from A. So we're coming from point A, we need to get to point B. And we've got these rules of bearings, so we're going to measure that angle from north. So we're imagining we're standing at point A, facing north, and we're going to turn clockwise until we're facing point B, and that's the angle that we want. So to answer this, we're going to do one of my favorite things in maths. We're going to use other facts and techniques that we already know to help us solve this new problem. In this example, we're going to use our knowledge of angles on a straight line and angles and parallel lines. So the two lines pointing to north, they must be parallel. And that means if I extend this line, we know that this angle is 73 degrees because they're corresponding angles and corresponding angles are always equal. And we know that this angle must be 180 degrees because it's on a straight line. So from there is a simple step of just adding those two angles together to find the total angle. So 180 degrees add 73 degrees is 253 degrees. So the bearing of B from A is 253 degrees. Now this scenario is called a back bearing and a back bearing is where you're given the bearing from B to A, but you need to work out the other way around from A to B. And it's called a back bearing because it's a bearing you would walk on if you're going back to B. It's a journey done the other way around. So where you have a back bearing, if you know the angle you're trying to find is a reflex angle, it's bigger than 180 degrees, you can find it simply by adding 180 degrees to the angle you've been given. In this example, we did 73, sorry, add 180. So let's look at a similar question where the angle you're trying to find isn't a reflex angle. In a diagram, the direction of north is indicated with the letter N in two places. The points B and C are also shown work out the bearing of B from C. And we've got this 303 degree angle. But the question says to work out the bearing of B from C. So we're coming from point C to point B. And the rules of bearings tell us that we're going to measure this angle from north. So imagining we're facing north, standing at point C, what angle do we need to turn through until we're facing point B? And that's that angle there that I'm showing. So we need to use our knowledge of parallel lines and angles on a straight line to work out the missing angle. If we extend this line, you can see that we're splitting that 303 degree angle in two. This part is on a straight line, so that's going to be 180 degrees. And the rest of it is this part, which must just be 303 degrees, take away that 180, which is 123 degrees. Because both of those lines are pointing to north, we know they're parallel, and that means that this angle and this angle are equal, they're corresponding angles. So the bearing of B from C is 123 degrees. Okay, and that's a back bearing because we're given the bearing from B to C, and we're asked for the bearing back from C to B. So the trick here, where you're trying to find the angle and it's less than 180 degrees, the one you're trying to find is that you just subtract 180 degrees from the other angle. In this case, we did 303 minus 180 degrees. Finally, you might get a question like this, where you're asked to find a bearing, but you aren't given a diagram. So Raheem is standing at a bearing of 205 degrees from his house. And what's the bearing of Raheem's house from where he's standing? So it's a kind of back bearing question, isn't it? So my tip for these is to draw a quick sketch to give you an idea of what's going on. You don't have to do that. Um, I, I just find it easier and I find I make fewer mistakes if I do. So if I sketch this, I have Raheem's house here. I'm going to label that with an H just for his house. This is north and I need to place Raheem at a bearing of 205 degrees from there. I know that's a 
bit bigger than 180 degrees, so it'll look something like that. And that'll be Rahim there. I'll put an R for Rahim, and I'll put that north line in as well. So the bearing of his house from where he's standing will be this angle. And we can see it's an acute angle. And we know the rule for finding a back bearing, which is what we're doing here, when the angle we want to find is less than 180 degrees. We just subtract 180 degrees from the other angle. In this case, 205 minus 180, which is 25 degrees. So the bearing from Rahim to his house is 25 degrees, but don't forget we must have three figures in our bearings when we're describing them, so we would write it like this, 0, 2, 5. That's it. So those are the key skills you need to answer bearings questions. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking to improve at maths and want to practice personalized questions that are automatically marked, you can do that and lots more over at my website, mathskitchen.com. And if you want to practice specifically the types of questions I go through in this video, you can do so by following the link down in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another video.